Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another meal prep video. We're just going to jump right in with one of my lunches for the week, which is going to be Incheritos. For this, you're going to need some sort of tortilla. I'm using the La Banterita low carb tortilla and some sort of meat. I'm using the ground chicken. This is the 99% lean or 98% lean, so it's zero points. You'll need some fat free refried beans, some enchilada sauce, um, some sort of cheese, and then some taco seasoning. So I'm just going to take these tortillas and now I already cooked my meat. I didn't show you all that because I just cooked it up, added the taco seasoning to it. Now we're going to add on some of the fat-free refried beans, which these are zero points. Now I always tell you whenever I'm making these recipes, make sure you plug this into your recipe tracker because it may be different if you're using any other sort of ingredient. If you're not using the exact same ingredients that I'm using, it could come out different. But some things that are universal, fat-free refried beans, no matter what brand, as long as they're fat-free, they're zero points. But tortillas definitely range. And like I said, I'm using 98% fat-free ground chicken. It just happened to be on sale. It was a lot cheaper than the 96% lean ground beef. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go with it. When you put taco seasoning in there, just be a little bit different. Um, and I do like ground chicken. I do use ground chicken and ground turkey quite often. So I'm just spooning that in there since it is zero points. I'm not being super... Like careful about measuring it out but definitely if you're using a meat that is not zero points make sure you measure it out and I'm just putting this into I'm only making two of my lunches you guys know I like to have a variety for my lunches so I just try to meal prep for two lunches and I just eat it to eat the two different lunches two times a week and then I'll eat like leftovers for the fifth day of the week and during the weekend I also just use up the rest of the leftovers from dinners throughout the week so next up, we're going to pour over the enchilada sauce. So I just have the enchilada sauce here. I'm just kind of pouring that over. I kind of estimated that there would be like a quarter cup per um, serving on this, which is zero points. But you do have to watch what kind of enchilada sauce you buy too because sometimes it does have points, but I don't worry about it too much because most of this sauce goes into the pan. So not a lot of it goes on your actual thing. And for my cheese, I'm using the Kroger Reduced Fat uh, Mexican blend cheese. I did weigh out um, two servings of this cheese, so I'm trying to kind of do, I probably, to be super accurate, I should have weighed out enough for one serving and then weighed out the second one for the other serving, so then that way I could be, you know, completely precise, but I actually did not end up using all the cheese on, the, on both of them. It just was too much. Now I'm going to cover this with foil, kind of try to tint it a little bit so your foil doesn't stick to your cheese. And then this is going to go into the oven at 350 for 15 minutes. Take off the foil and then do back another 10 minutes to make sure your cheese is nice and melted. And then I'm just going to put two of these in each of my containers. And then I'll show you here in a second um, how I'm going to serve this. So I'm going to make this a little bit different than just a regular like enchilada because it's supposed to be like a burrito, enchilada. So I will be topping it with some shredded lettuce and then some pico de gallo and some fat-free plain non-fat Greek yogurt. I like to use that in place of sour cream. So that's how I will serve this up. So stay tuned for my what I eat in a week video and you will see what this looks like all dressed up and yummy. The next lunch item I'm going to have this week is going to be a KFC bowl casserole. Now, depending on the chicken you use, you could actually make this a lot less points if you use just regular chicken breast, but I'm trying to use up things out of my freezer, so I'm using this chicken. I have these two different cheeses I'm going to mix together, and then some rice cauliflower for the mashed cauliflower. So I'm not using mashed potatoes, I'm using mashed cauliflower. You'll need some corn, some minced garlic, and some butter. I'm using the I can't believe it's not light, I can't believe it's not butter light. Um, I may have enough of the fat-free cheddar to do this. I don't normally buy fat-free cheddar, but because it was a substitution, that's how I ended up with it. I usually use the reduced fat. And then also you need some brown gravy mix, or you can make your own brown gravy, or you could use the jar, but I'm just using this mix right here. Now to make my mashed cauliflower, so what I did here was I put in two tablespoons of the light butter. We're going to let that melt a little bit, then we're going to add in a probably about two tablespoons of garlic. You know, I, no, I never measure garlic, so I'm just putting a huge heaping this big spoonful of garlic in there. Then we're going to let that saute a little bit, just tell the garlic is kind of cooked up a little bit, you know, kind of like where you really can start to smell it. And meanwhile, my, my cauliflower is in the microwave thawing out because I want it completely thawed out 
before we add it to our bowl here or to our skillet. Now we're going to add on both of those things of cauliflower. Now because rice cauliflower, once you make it into mash, it kind of disappears. So I use two of them and I know it seems like a lot, but you'll see it's going to kind of disappear <laughs> and it'll make like two of these really makes two servings of mashed cauliflower as far as I'm concerned because I really like it, especially making it this way with that garlic and that butter. So now that we're going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. And then what I'm going to do now that I've sauteed this up a little bit, got the butter and the garlic mixed around. Now we're going to turn this down to low. I turned it on to three on my stove and then I'm going to put a cover on it. And I'm just going to let it sit there for about probably about 15 minutes. And that's just going to look, let it get nice and kind of dried out. And it just kind of, you let that water kind of absorb a little bit. And then you will, um, we'll put it in our blender. So now that our rice has been sitting there, you'll see it kind of has a crispy texture to it. You see those brown bits. I'm sorry, I didn't really show it very well in the camera. But that's what I like to have because it has just like a roasted flavor to it. So I'm putting that in my blender cup. Now everybody makes their mashed cauliflower different and you can buy mashed cauliflower and you can also just use mashed potatoes in this, whatever you'd like to use. But you guys know I like to kind of get extra double the veggies and so this is what I like to do. So I'm just putting this all in here. Now if it does not, mine still has a little bit of liquid, but if, it, if yours is too dry and it doesn't mix up very well, you can add a little bit of broth or water or like half and half. I'm going to do one tablespoon, one more tablespoon of, I can't believe it's not light, can't believe it's not butter light. I don't know why I can't say that. Then we're going to smooth this out. So you see how mine's smoothing out really well. If yours does not, like I said, you can add some broth, you can add some water, add some half and half, something like that. Whatever you'd like to use, almond milk, anything like that. So I did spray my pan with some, I mean my casserole dish with, with some cooking spray. And I'm just putting all of that mashed cauliflower all over the bottom here. You can see, look how much that made. This is not even a very big casserole dish. This is a pretty small one because this is only two servings. And now we're going to add on our corn, which I did put the corn in the microwave because, again, I didn't want, and I let it sit in a colander in the sink because I did not want it to be super liquidy over the mashed cauliflower. So I just cooked the corn, put it in a colander while I was doing everything else. So I'm just going to put the corn on top, which is zero points. The mashed cauliflower, we're only counting for the butter. And then the chicken, I did two servings of chicken. So this is six ounces of the chicken that I just cooked, heated up in the microwave, put on top here. And then um, I actually had a half a cup of the fat-free cheddar left. So I just went ahead and just used that. So I'm just going to add that on top. Now with the chicken, normally I don't like this chicken in the microwave, but because I'm putting it in the oven, I did not see any reason to put it in the air fryer, which is how I normally eat this chicken. So we're just going to add um, that half a cup of cheese on top here again use whatever kind of cheese you want I'm just using up this fat free cheddar and then put the foil again tent your foil a little bit and I did cook this at the same time as the Enchiritos just so you know I did <laughs> did multitask with this because this also goes into the oven at 350 for 15 minutes take the foil off let it sit for 10 minutes in the mic I mean in the oven again so another 10 minutes at 350 now we're going to split this up between two you can see how cheesy and yummy that looks so I have, um, I'm going to pour over the um, brown gravy that is made in the microwave. And you'll see here, it looks so good, y'all. Have, I'll have everything here on the screen for points, calories, and all of that. But I am looking forward to this so much. It just looks so good. Now, y'all know I've been loving my protein loaves. I got this new protein powder that is a blueberry muffin flavor from Rise. I cannot wait to try it. Um, I don't have any kind of discount code or anything, so I will link them down below. Then I'm, I'm going to do a double batch. I've never done a double batch before of this. I don't know why I didn't think about doing that before, but I didn't. So I'm making two of them, as I always do. I've been making two of these every week since I discovered this these protein powders. Like, it is so good. So I'm doing two scoops of the blueberry muffin protein powder. Again, this makes two little mini, muff, mini loaves. And then we're going to do a half of or two teaspoons of baking powder which that's a little two teaspoon um, measuring spoon then we're going to do a half a cup of the oatmeal which I will have one serving one loaf down in the description box of the recipe just in case you only want to do one loaf and then I like to mix my dry ingredients just to get them all incorporated before I add the wet ingredients and that baking powder this time for some reason did not want to mix up. 
Now this protein powder, I would say it's not quite as fine as the Devotion, but it seems to be working. It seemed to mix up really well and everything. That was my concern because some protein powders don't mix very well, and that's why you can never bake with them. And then I'm doing a half a cup of egg whites, and then I'm going to do a half a cup of unsweetened applesauce, which one of these containers is just a tad over a quarter cup. So I ended up using um, all of it, but just a tiny bit in the bottom of one of them which I just ended up eating because unsweetened applesauce is really good. And you can also use pumpkin in this. So if you want to use pumpkin instead, just do a half a cup of pumpkin if you're making two of them. And then I just sprinkle in some cinnamon and then we're just going to give that a stir. Now these muffin tins you're going to see, I reuse these. They're not, they're the heavy duty ones, which technically they're just a one use and you toss away, but they are so heavy duty that I have been able, this is the third time I've used them and I have had zero issues with them. I got mine at Safeway, just randomly found them at Safeway because Walmart did not have these kind. But I did, I do spray them really well with cooking spray. I was able to fit two of them in there perfectly, so it worked out doubling the recipe. Sometimes you can't double baked good recipes, but this turned out super well. You're gonna put this in a 350 degree oven. I did mine for 20 minutes. The Devotion ones take anywhere between 20 to 25. Your oven will vary. You may even start with 15 just to be sure, but this is what mine looked like coming out at 20 minutes. They came out perfect, so 20 minutes was perfect. I will definitely let you know next week how, if, how I like these compared to Devotion ones, but they smelled absolutely amazing just like blueberry muffins in my house. The last thing we're going to make are some copycat Starbucks egg bites, and for this recipe, I'm going to need nine eggs. We need a 16-ounce thing of cottage cheese. I'm using fat-free. We'll need um, six tablespoons of bacon bits. We need a half a cup of cheese and some pepper. And then I bought this little thing like five years ago on Amazon. That's when I first made these egg bites. And you put them in the um, Instant Pot is how I'm making mine. I will link a recipe down below that gives you, um, and that, that's the same recipe I've always used for mine, and it gives you options for oven as well. So just in case you don't have a Instant Pot like I do, then um, you can check out that um, recipe blog and you'll see also how you can do it in the oven. And I will also link this thing. I don't know if it's available. When I looked it up on Amazon, it said I last purchased it in 2019. So have no idea if it's still available. I just glanced at it. So I will link that or one that's like it down in the description box. So the, and I'm gonna I'll come on after this after I'm done making these and I'm gonna give you some more um, how I make these and my thoughts on them and how many it makes. So I'll jump on the camera here after we're all done here. So you just want to put everything in your blender cup. So we have our cottage cheese, our eggs, our cheese, our pepper, everything but the bacon bits. So I should have said that everything but the bacon bits. Then you want to go ahead and mix that until it is completely smooth. Now you want to spray this silicone thing really well with cooking spray. Now I prefer to put the bacon bits in the bottom. I just find it's a lot easier than trying to put them inside or on the top when you know they don't they tend to like not sink very well. So I prefer to put them at the bottom. Now I did make this recipe saying six tablespoons, but I did not use all the bacon bits when I had first measured them out. And so I really think you can get away with like four tablespoons of them. So um, anyway, I just think I used way too many because I wasn't, I, after I put everything in there, I was like, oh, don't I want to put this many? And I don't know. I really kind of think I should not have used that many. And then you're going to fill your cups about three quarters full. This is important. Now, I, this is a messy thing. I need to get a better like system for pouring these. I kind of overfilled mine a little bit too much. You really only want to do about three quarters full because these things puff up like crazy. And I tried to get a picture, but by the time I got over there after they're done being cooked, they completely went down. So if you do make these in your Instant Pot and you've never made them before, don't get worried. They will go down. So you want to put it one and a half cups of water in your Instant Pot. I have this little thing. I think it came with this thing. And then you're going to put your egg bites on top. You're going to put your lid on. You're going to seal it. And if you have an Instant Pot, you know what that means. You're going to seal it. And you're going to put this on the steam setting for eight minutes. And then, like I said, when they come out, they're going to be puffed up gigantic. Just take the lid off, let them sit in your crock pot, and they will go down. And this is what you're going to get. 
and they are so good. They I don't know if they taste like the ones from Starbucks because honestly, I've never had the ones from Starbucks. I've always just made these cat, copycat versions, so no idea how they taste. But I think these ones taste amazing, so if they do taste anything like the Starbucks ones, then I'm sure I like those ones, but just don't come at me and say these taste nothing like the Starbucks ones. Well, that concludes this week's meal prep video. I did, I told you guys I would talk about the eggs here at the end. So with eggs, I used to be able to meal prep eggs for an entire week. Now, hard boiled eggs I can, but any other kind of egg bites, egg muffin cups, I am so sensitive to the taste now that I feel like after two days, it has this off taste to them. And I, it's, I don't know if it's just on ones that I have to reheat. I don't know. So now I try to make eggs at like two meals at a time and then I remake them. So that egg bite recipe actually makes 21 of the little egg bites. I usually eat three of them and three of them is only one point. So that is how I do that. So I they're so easy to make in my Instant Pot that I just, if I know I'm gonna have them the next day, I'll just take the batter, which I just leave in my refrigerator. I'll just take the batter and make another batch that'll be good for another two days. So that's why you saw me only make just one batch of them, which has two, well, has two servings plus one bite. So some one of the days I'll have, th I'll have four of them or I'll just eat it with something else. So Anywho, that is this week's meal prep, so stay tuned next week for my What I Eat in a Week video, and you can see how the Enchiritos look all dressed up, and I'll let you know how the KFC bowl casserole worked out, which I'm sure it'll be fine because we've had the KFC bowls before, but never like cooked like that, which made it super easy to just throw together, and the Enchiritos I think will be amazing, So, and I'll definitely give you... Um, an update on the blueberry protein loaf. I'll let you know how that turns out as well. So thank you guys for taking time as always out of your day to watch my videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.